the best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves. Vladimir Lenin Good afternoon, everybody. So uh, this is going to be probably a lead up to another video I'm going to do, which is probably going to be pretty controversial, I guess. Uh, but let's go ahead and start it off. So uh, I've been watching <clears throat> my uh, like YouTube um, subscriber list and uh, notifications, and uh, it's kind of cleaning it up a bit, just like. I used to just uh, subscribe to people where I saw one video and it was good, and then I'd see a bunch of other videos, which is like, no, that's not very good. And then um, people who would subscribe to me, I'd subscribe to them if they have videos that look like um, pretty useful information, right? That they would put something out there. Um, anyways, uh, this one is from, uh, I started watching it because of Perth Observer. I'm subscribed to her. Uh, I'm still on the fence about th this one, but um, you know, I, I just noticed, and I was like, "Huh, oh, okay, this is interesting." So, what what's going on is this person is kind of uh, ended up going big, um, and especially if like small YouTubers are covering them, and of course, this is a, more along the lines of uh, "Hey, plain truth." It's just, you know, the whole opposition to doing what's right, uh, you're free, you support the Constitution of the United States, etc. Uh, so <laughs> I just want to do a little checkup on it. And Greg Anderson is this officer from Seattle, Washington. I grew up near there. And um, he wrote he had two videos that kind of went somewhat viral. Yeah, this one is 8 minutes, 40 second, 47 seconds. And then he had a follow-up one, 8 minutes, 49 seconds. You can watch all of the stuff over on his Instagram page. Um, and you can see he's got the one-eyed symbolism, black and white checkerboard, you know, of all these different profiles that you can have. Uh, he chooses that one. Uh, his name is Granderson33. 33 is a big number for Freemasonry. Anyways, the idea is this person could be a Freemason in controlled opposition and make up your own mind. And, you know, the quote that I have for the day is from Vladimir Lenin. The best way to control the opposition uh, is to lead it ourselves. Now, two almost nine minute videos. And this person uh, has raised... As of right now, $252,019 on GoFundMe. Um, very suspect. I mean, I've been around in uh, a lot of, uh, I guess, protest type work. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, just, just something to... Activism. That's the word for it. Never raise money this fast, even for something bigger and more important. But, uh, you know, the ones who do seem to raise a lot of money are just people who like to talk about things. And, of course, we've seen very similar instances. Um, at least I have. Remember the um, the pipeline over in South Dakota? And um, there was the, the military ex-military officers remember and they're leading it and uh, the guy who was in charge of it well <laughs> he was pretty shady he, he took a lot of money um and I, I may go over it i'll try to find it but anyways i'm gonna let you i'm gonna pretty much uh play back these two videos that you did in order this one and the next one and then um we'll talk about it a little bit more all right 
You know, as a police officer, I'm compelled to make this video. I've been in law enforcement for 10 years and I'm speaking to my peers, other fellow officers, people in any kind of law enforcement position. Um, I've seen officers nationwide enforcing tyrannical orders against the people. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's the minority of officers, but I'm not sure anymore because every time I turn on the television, every time I turn, I look to the internet, I'm seeing people arrested or cited for going to church, for traveling on the roadways, for going surfing, opening their businesses, going to the park Next with their families, um, or doing nails out of their, out of their own house, using their own house as a place of business and have an undercover agents go there and arrest them and charge them with, with what? With a crime? I don't, I don't know what crime people are committing by doing nails in their own house, but we're seeing this more and more and more. And uh, we need to start looking at ourselves as officers and thinking, is what I'm doing right? Now, I want to remind you that regardless of where you stand on the coronavirus, we don't have the authority to do those things to people just because a mayor or a governor tells you otherwise. Uh, I don't care if it's your sergeant or your chief of police. We don't get to violate people's constitutional rights because somebody in our chain of command tells us otherwise. It's not how this country works. Um, those are de facto arrests. You know, we're violating people's rights and, and, and taking money from them or even worse, arresting them and depriving them of their freedom when they are exercising their constitutional rights. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, let's, let's read something right here off of the Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal. Among these, we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their power from the consent of the governed. Meaning, their, our power, and any government official's power is derived from the people. Okay? We don't hold power over our citizens. That's, it's... It's contradictory to everything that our country stands for. And, and this is what I'm seeing. First Amendment rights. Telling people they can't go to church. Freedom of religion. Okay? Telling people they can't protest. Freedom of assembly. Um, Fourth Amendment violations. Illegal traffic stops to check for papers. What are you, the Gestapo? Is this 1930s Nazi Germany? You don't get to stop people unless you have reasonable suspicion or probable cause that they have committed a crime. And I know people that are, have personally been stopped saying we want to see papers showing that you're essential. David, you copy a phone call. That is not how our job works. Okay. What really has been pissing me off lately is the fact that these officers that are going out here and, and, and enforcing these tyrannical orders, what they're doing is they're making my job and my safety, or, or they're putting my job and my safety at risk. Because what you're doing is you're widening the gap between public trust and law enforcement officers. And, and what that's going to do is it's going to, I mean, look at, look at what's happened to law enforcement in the last 10 years, less and less public trust. And more often than not, that is a result of isolated incidents that get blown out of proportion. They're not isolated anymore. They're happening every single day. And the thing that I want you guys to realize is that our power that, that we hold as law enforcement officers, it's nothing more than a facade. It's a badge and a gun. And people, you don't realize if you haven't lived in anarchy, if you haven't seen combat, Things can be stripped from people in a heartbeat. And, and that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that these actions are going to wake a sleeping giant, i.e. the American people. Okay, They are going to be put in a position where they won't have their rights trampled anymore. 
and us as law enforcement officers will we'll have our ability to enforce the law stripped from us in about 10 minutes okay i i don't i think what is going to happen if this continues is we're going to see bloodshed in the streets okay i don't want to see bloodshed in the streets on either side of this coin. I don't want to see fellow officers get injured or killed, and I certainly don't want to see citizens get injured or killed. And I promise you, most of you out there doing these 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 tyrannical acts against our citizens, you're not ready for combat. You're not mentally or physically ready for combat in the first place. I promise you, you don't want to go through that, and I hope I never have to go through that again. Um... You know, you don't get to just say, well, I'm doing this because I was told to do so, or I'm following orders, or I need to keep this job. Guess what? I need to keep this job more than anybody. I have three young children. I have two houses. Like, I have the same sob story that the rest of you guys have, but my personal choices and my living arrangements, no matter what they are, don't allow me to trample on people's rights. And I don't understand why that concept is so hard for for people to understand. Listen, you need to stand up for what's right. You need to, if, if if you're part of a department or an agency that is asking people or asking their officers or their deputies to impose on people's rights and infringe on their, their, their freedoms, you need to step up and say, no, that's not me. That's not what I signed up for. And that's going against my oath. And if that costs you your job, so be it. At least you'll be able to look at yourself in the mirror at night. I've already expressed this to my department. And and luckily for me, I come from a department that I feel like my chain of command shares my view. But I don't care what department you're part of or what your chain of command thinks. You don't get to trample on people's liberty. And so, you know, as a special operations veteran, I've fought on the streets of Iraq for under the US government's guise of freedom. And I'm telling you what, the American people are going to be, they are, you are gonna wake a sleeping giant and they are gonna fight 10 times harder for their freedom on their soil than anything you've ever seen before. And if that's something you're willing to face, then, then keep trampling on people's rights. But I promise you, the American spirit of defiance is going to rise again and it's gonna be a big, problem for our country. So I'll leave you with this, something that I learned as a, an E nothing in the army. No matter what situation you're put in, if you look inside yourself and ask yourself one question, am I doing the right thing? You ask yourself that, you know the answer and no amount of money or no order or law or anything should be able to make you go against doing the right thing. So I'm imploring officers to look inside themselves and ask themselves, is this what I want to be doing to my citizens? And and I think the answer is clear. And if we all stand up together, guess what? It'll be a non-issue, no factor, because people and law enforcement will be united like we should be. You know, as a police officer, I'm compelled to make this video. I've been in law enforcement for 10 years and I'm speaking to my peers, other fellow officers, people in any kind of law enforcement position. Um, I've seen officers nationwide enforcing tyrannical orders against the people. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's the minority of officers, but I'm not sure anymore because every time I turn on the television Every time I turn, I look to the internet, I'm seeing people arrested or cited for going to church, for traveling on the roadways, for going surfing, opening their businesses, going to the park with their families, um, or doing nails out of their, out of their own house, using their own house as a place of business and have an undercover agents go there and arrest them and charge them with, with what, with a crime? I don't, I don't know what crime people are committing by doing nails in their own house, but we're seeing this more and more and more. And uh, we need to start looking at ourselves as officers 
and thinking is what I'm doing right. Now, I want to remind you that regardless of where you stand on the coronavirus, we don't have the authority to do those things to people just because a mayor or a governor tells you otherwise. Uh, I don't care if it's your sergeant or your chief of police. We don't get to violate people's constitutional rights because somebody in our chain of command tells us otherwise. It's not how this country works. Um, those are de facto arrests. You know, we're violating people's rights and, and, and taking money from them or even worse, arresting them and depriving them of their freedom when they are exercising their constitutional rights. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, let's, let's read something right here off of the Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal. Among these, we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their power from the consent of the governed. Meaning, their, our power and any government official's power is derived from the people. Okay? We don't hold power over our citizens. That's, it's... It's contradictory to everything that our country stands for. And, and this is what I'm seeing. First Amendment rights. Telling people they can't go to church. Freedom of religion. Okay. Telling people they can't protest. Freedom of assembly. Um, Fourth Amendment violations. Illegal traffic stops to check for papers. What are you, the Gestapo? Is this 1930s Nazi Germany? You don't get to stop people unless you have reasonable suspicion or probable cause that they have committed a crime. And I know people that are, have personally been stopped saying we want to see papers showing that you're essential. David, you copy a phone call. That is not how our job works. Okay. What really has been pissing me off lately is the fact that these officers that are going out here and, and, and enforcing these tyrannical orders, what they're doing is they're making my job and my safety, or, or they're putting my job and my safety at risk. Because what you're doing is you're widening the gap between public trust and law enforcement officers. And, and what that's going to do is it's going to, I mean, look at, look at what's happened to law enforcement in the last 10 years, less and less public trust. And more often than not, that is a result of isolated incidents that get blown out of proportion. They're not isolated anymore. They're happening every single day. And the thing that I want you guys to realize is that our power that, that we hold as law enforcement officers, it's nothing more than a facade. It's a badge and a gun. And people, you don't realize if you haven't lived in anarchy, if you haven't seen combat, Things can be stripped from people in a heartbeat. And, and that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that these actions are going to wake a sleeping giant, i.e. the American people. Okay, They are going to be put in a position where they won't have their rights trampled anymore. And us as law enforcement officers, we'll, we'll have our ability to enforce the law stripped from us in about 10 minutes. Okay? I... I don't, I think what is going to happen if this continues is we're going to see bloodshed in the streets. Okay. I don't want to see bloodshed in the streets on either side of this coin. I don't want to see fellow officers get injured or killed. And I certainly don't want to see citizens get injured or killed. And I promise you, most of you out there doing these, these, these tyrannical acts against our citizens, you're not ready for combat. You're not mentally or physically ready for combat in the first place. I promise you, you don't want to go through that. And I hope I never have to go through that again. Um, you know, you don't get to just say, well, I'm doing this because I was told to do so, or I'm following orders or I need to keep this job. Guess what? I need to keep this job more than anybody. I have three young children. I have two houses. Like, I have the same sob story that the rest of you guys have. 
Oh, I guess it was on repeat. I should double check that more often. <laughs> Alright. I just like it how he's like, I got the same stop story. I got two children, two houses. Two houses! <laughs> um, what's funny is the, uh, you know, he's been on the force for 10 years. And this is the first time he speaks out about uh, things going on that are tyrannical and things like that. <clears throat> Otherwise, there's been people over the last 10 years that have been speaking about out about this whole thing. They don't get that many views. Uh, this is, what, 669,000 views. They get nowhere near amount of money raised. I mean, just watching that for the last uh, 12 minutes, he's made two grand. People have been doing this for 10 years. They make 10, two grand uh, speaking out about all this stuff. Um, one of the things I did uh, remember is Wesley Clark Jr. and Michael Wood. They're the ones who... Um, uh, kind of took control of the situation in Standing Rock uh, with the Dakota Access Pipeline, right? And just the amount of money that was uh, raised uh, by them. And, uh, of course, you know, you've got a bunch of uh, indigenous uh, people who are, you know, trying to protect their land or the land, not necessarily their land, but... Uh, you know the way how it's done you know he they raised at least on this one veterans for standing rock no dapple 1.15 million dollars right now uh what you don't see in the news uh i mean you'll see it in a lot of like small news uh but you know there's articles that have been around for a while you know what happened to the eight million dollars people raised for standing rock you know um They'll pretty much tell you kind of somewhat uh, the story. But then there's also been a petition and many other people who have sp spoken out against Michael A. Wood. And um, here, here's one. Wesley Clark Jr. and Michael Wood returned Standing Rock money. Wesley Clark Jr. and Michael Wood set up a GoFundMe.com account in the guise of helping veterans travel to Standing Rock, North Dakota, according to the page. The funds we raise on this page will go towards providing transportation supplies for the brave patriots that come and stand with us. Of the more than 1.15 million that has been donated, zero of the money has been distributed, and despite having masterminded the money raised under his own name, Clark now claims he does not have access to the money. Uh, there are links here. Um, I have no control of the money from you. have to ask Michael Wood Jr. Um... You believe that you're going to solicit donations for costs and all this other stuff. Um, and then you've only got <laughs> 44 supporters for this cause. Nobody, nobody's seeing it. You know, you've got all, all these people who are, who are, who are there or, you know, been in the front lines, didn't have any recognition, you know, didn't get any help. And, um, that was controlled opposition. Here, here's one from Sherman Wood. Originally, the Facebook posts and emails from Clark and maybe Wood said that the equipment purchased and money would be left with the tribe. Apparently, the tribe did not receive it. And many veterans who went to stand with them did not even get money for meals. Plus, many paid their own travel, most of the carpools, and stayed in gyms. Then Clark made a video saying money would go to veterans travel and extra would go to future projects. What the heck? That is not what I donated for. All the money needs to be given to the volunteers for their expenses and the tribe as soon as possible. That is what was advertised the people at standing rock need the money i did not donate for clark's miscellaneous future projects as he said in a recent video whatever those are it is clear that clark is a self-promoter and many of us have started got involved with him at all luke eastman i'm signing because what's the clark jr and michael word of turds he's this whole thing for self-promotion fuck those guys tracy Beering, that shit is shameful for the whole movement daphne martin and please read dress the situation without delay Many people who were unable to be there themselves contributed to your fund in good faith and in support of the veterans who stood up in solidarity with Standing Rock and now purported your vision of support. So, um, you can pretty much see uh, a lot of the stuff in the past. The whole controlled opposition always seems to come into play. A lot of money gets, a lot of no notoriety or uh, a lot of visibility gets gets done. Um and a lot of money gets raised, you know. Uh, people think that's a good thing, but again, what happened in the end? Well, <laughs> the Kodak pipeline kept going. Uh, the whole Standing Rock, I think, is still getting, is still happening, but they're receiving no help, no visibility at all. 
And uh, the people who, who spent time and energy trying to support that, well, they didn't really support them because they supported uh, the people who were spearheading it, uh, which are the controlled opposition. And then again, ex-military, ex-police officers. Uh, Wesley Clark Jr. is the son of Wesley Clark, General Wesley Clark, and you think he's going to uh, be on your side? I, I don't know what to tell you. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you this uh, eight, almost nine minute video. And uh, I'll continue with my dribble, whatever you want to call it. Hey, what's up, guys? So I just kind of wanted to take a couple minutes, get everybody caught up to speed on what's going on in my life. I've been getting a lot of questions and uh, figured I'd just make a second video and, and answer some of the things that I've been receiving. I first wanted to say I'm humbled by the response that my video got. It's been viewed millions and millions of times. People all over the country have been calling me, texting me, sending me emails, comments, and uh, the overwhelming majority of it, of it has been positive. And so I think that's pretty cool because my whole thought process on making that video was trying to bridge the gap between law enforcement and the public. And I've seen both sides with open arms willing to embrace that. And I think that's a step in the right direction. So that's pretty cool. One thing that I've seen come up over and over in the comments, I've seen been come up been over and over in the comments, seen come up over and over in the comments. Or is there any discipline being, being uh, or any discipline taking place? And so I figured I'd, I'd take a chance and give you a little synopsis of the last three days of my life after posting that video. Um, so I posted the video on Tuesday, was it May 5th? And it, it took pretty, you know, it took a day or two before it really started getting a lot of traction. But the next morning when I woke up on the 6th, it was only, I think it was only at a few thousand views. And I had received a message from my command saying, wow, Greg, what a powerful message. We agree with that 100%, well done. And that was actually a relief for me because I was like, great, you know, I know that it's risky putting something out like that but I felt like it was so grounded in integrity and liberty that no one would have an issue with it. So that was, that was a relief. And then fast forward three hours later, I get another phone call from my command and it said, hey, hey Greg, the video's up to 400,000 views. It's time to pull the plug on this thing. And I immediately, it, it kind of caught me off guard because I said, why would, why would we want to pull the plug on something that was already acknowledged as a good and powerful message from one law enforcement officer to others. And uh, I said, yeah, that doesn't really make sense to me. I think maybe we should embrace this message and we should share this with other officers. And he said, listen, you know, it's not up to me. I have been directed to tell you to take the video down and I need to know if you're gonna take the video down. And I, I said, no, I can't take the video down because if you listen to my first video, the whole message that I was trying to share with people and impart on them is if you believe in something in your heart, you have to stand by that conviction, even if it costs you everything. And like I said last time, I have three little kids. I have this house. I have another house. I cannot afford to lose my job. But after putting that message out there and sharing that with America, and it was so well received, I can't then just say, even though that's what I believe, I'm going to take a step back I'm gonna retract my words and I'm gonna allow my command to prevent me from sharing my heart and my truth. And I said, so with that, with that in mind, sir, I can't take the video down. And uh, you know, I didn't know where this was gonna go. And I immediately started thinking about what are they gonna try and gig me on? You know, what did I do wrong? What policy did I violate? And uh, I got called back a couple hours later and by this time, it was skyrocketing. Everyone in the agency was seeing it. Cops from when I was a, an officer down in Los Angeles, they were contacting me. I got a call and it said, listen, the video needs to be taken down right now and you need to accept a letter of reprimand. Or we're gonna take a very different approach to this if you say no again. Well, I'd already put myself on that hill and I had, to, I had to be willing to die on that hill. They said they determined the video was a violation of policy and uh, that if I wouldn't take it down, 
that allegations would be made against me and so on and so on. And so I told him, no, I'm not gonna take it down. You do what you need to do. But the principle of it is rooted in truth and it was a positive message that was received by millions and millions of people. If you want me to take it down, I have to, I have to respectfully refuse. And it was interesting because they kept citing different policies, you know, like, oh, was the, the social media policy or some of your equipment may have been identifiable. And that kind of seemed like a moot point to me. And it was strange because why was the message okay at 5 a.m.? And then three hours later, there was a problem with it. And so I was later contacted by the chief of police. He's someone that I have great respect for. He's a good man to work for. And he's the one that shot me straight. And he said, Greg, if you openly defy your governor, you can't be a police officer in the state of Washington. And uh, I told him, I said, you know what? I can respect that. And if I were in your office, I would shake your hand, respectfully disagree, and say, maybe I'm not meant to be a police officer in the state of Washington then. And, and here's my thoughts on that, okay? You have to do your research. You have to figure out what your true north is, what your truth is, and where you stand on issues. For me personally, I, th I believe that the Constitution supersedes all other documents, all other laws. There's case law supporting that. If you look at Marbury versus Madison, 1803, it says any laws, any future laws created that are repugnant, meaning in conflict with the Constitution, are null and void. So when I look at how I feel comfortable enforcing the law, and I see people exercising constitutional rights, it doesn't matter if there's different executive orders, requests from mayors, requests from governors. For, to me, the Constitution supersedes that, and I'm gonna stand with the people. Well, unfortunately, you know, higher up in all agencies, there's a political game being played, and now I am on a administrative leave status pending termination. I was told by both the agency and the union that I was asked to take it down and I refused. So that's refusing a direct order. It's an insubordination charge and it will result in me ultimately being let go from the agency. And I said, you know what, if that's what you guys have to do, if, if that video is so bad that you wanna take my career from me and you want to leave my, you know, like pot potentially take my ability away to provide for my family because of that video, do it. Because I'm gonna stand by my convictions, just like I said in my last video. Um, so yeah, it's weird, you know, how fast your life can change in a week. It's, uh, it's something that I never thought would happen. I never thought that I would make a video that would resonate with millions of people. But you know, my head is held high. I, uh, I'm not intimidated or upset by how this played out. Like I said in my last video, man, I fought in the streets of Ramadi during 04 and 05. I came to terms long ago that my convictions and my beliefs may cost me everything up into my life. And even though it's 15 years later and I'm a police officer in Seattle, Washington, that truth still remains for me. So I don't have an option to back down or feel sorry for myself or give in and say, you know what, I got kids and I think I'm just gonna take the letter. No, if they wanna do me like this for standing up for liberty, they can do that. Uh, I'll leave you guys with this. Um, you know, it's on to the new adventure for me. I've been, I've been doing different things my whole life and uh, I'm actually excited to tell you the truth. Uh, if you know of anyone accepting resumes, hit me up because I might need it in the near future. But, uh, you know, I've always wanted to circumnavigate the globe on a sailboat, so maybe it's time to chase that dream. Anyways, I appreciate all the support, guys. Take care. How do you like that? Circumnavig he ends with circumnavigate the globe <laughs> in a sailboat. Uh, good stuff. Um, so uh, here you go. The hidden one eye symbolism, the uh, black and white checkered board, uh, Granderson 33, you know easily points to freemasonry and of course uh hey you might agree with freemasonry um you know some of the stuff that they 
hide from me actually is stuff that you should uh, know and it's not bad <laughs> it's not good or bad but it's it can be used for either um, he's kind of worried about you know he's he's on administrative leave still being paid he says it right there he's worried about uh, how he's gonna you know raise his three kids with the uh, his two houses <laughs> Uh, and, uh, let's see, he, 254,217 in the last eight, nine minutes. How much did he raise? Just another two grand. I don't think he's going to be that worried. Um, what happens to all this money when the video goes, uh, stays up? I mean, if it stays up, it gets terminated, right? If the video goes down, you know, then does he have his job back? What happens to the money then? But, you know, all this money is his no matter what. Uh, you don't see that much money be ever being raised. Uh, whatever you go down, you know, whether whether you go down to the whole 9-11 stuff, you go to the whole, you know, um, uh, flat earth, you know, globe earth lie, all that other stuff. What if you're not part of that control system, you know, you if you don't have any of the uh, credentials, right, you haven't been service in the, well, I've had some service in the military, but you don't have any service in the military, you don't have service in the, uh, like, being an officer, or politics, or PhD, whatever, all that stuff. If you don't have any of that stuff, right, your videos are going to be like mine. You'll have up to a thousand, you'll have no followers, no observe, no Almost nobody commenting on your videos. Not many people watching it. Definitely ain't gonna raise any money. Uh, nobody cares. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you got the the uh, controlled opposition fella who just comes up out of nowhere, posts two videos. They go viral, raises almost a quarter of a million dollars in, in less than a week. And there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, low key T, he's controlled up. His vibes are completely off. Ronnie Foshi, I wonder why truthers always post people like this. <laughs> yeah, low key. Uh, low key, it's like Loki, right? <laughs> uh, from Norse, I've been kind of following a whole bunch of Norse stuff. Interesting. Nothing goes viral unless it's allowed to. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, just watch out. Uh, keep track of this guy. You know, it's the same thing. And, um, you know, we, I'm going to go into race later on. And uh, people might think of me as racist, even though I have a white wife and, uh, you know, two children from her. Um, plenty of friends that are different races. And people equate uh, racial traits as racism. I don't think so. We, we are all grow up in different geographic locations, different people. We all have genetic differences. Uh, even whatever slight we and just because and of course racism is about racial superiority that your you, whatever race that you regard as superior to another is racism if you're white and you think white people are superior to other ra uh, races or colors whatever then that's racism heck if you're white and you believe black people are superior to other races that's still racism <laughs> right but if you think uh, none of them is superior to another you know that's equality but one thing i have been seeing in a lot of these uh movements whether it's controlled op or not you never know but uh one of the things that i i find as far, far as signs is that they always seem to try to get people to follow a form of authority that's already been set up though speaking out against every other authority out there except or control system whatever whatever you want to call it and they go oh except this one is okay right flat earth uh anyone almost everyone who's really well known in the flat earth movement uh majority of them are white and christian you don't really see that many non-whites and non-christians kind of touted in the whole flat earth community you see all these debates all these people who get invited into the bigger shows whether it's Joe Rogan or Alex Jones or whatever, they're not white. Um, and they're probably not Christian either, right? Everyone's going to be Christian white and they're going to be well known within it, whether it's controlled opposition. 
Heck, I have no idea. You know, even with this guy, Officer Anderson, I have no idea. So the next one is going to be probably talking about that. So that'll be a little bit interesting. Uh, one of the people that I've been subscribed to that's kind of getting bigger, right? Subtle Infinity, if you don't know his channel. Um, he's he's not white. Uh, he's flat earther. He's, I don't think he's Christian. Who knows? Um, and then there's, uh, of course, uh, f uh, flat Flathead Politics. Uh so, you know, there's very few people that uh, have good amount of people that, that follow and listen to. Oh, actually, D Marble is another one. So you got about three people who are well known within the flatter circles that aren't white. Um, let's see. I'm going to finish up with some uh, live chat. If anyone wants to come in and talk, the, the uh, description box has a link. Someone who's on an iPad, iPhone, wanted to come in earlier. Uh, I just wanted to finish the playback. So if you want to come in now, you can. Um, let's see. What does he need 200000 for? Well, he actually only wanted um, uh, 50000 gold. But, of course, anything after that is theirs anyway. Uh, let's see. Uh, never care for flat earth or globe earth at least still gonna run it no matter shape yeah you know but the e lights uh, I like to call them L light because <clears throat> L is good to stand for their God they're light versions of them um yeah they, they don't really run anything um, if you just kind of understand the principles of of nature i guess you could say um but people have the the imagination of or or the thought process that they have all this control and power uh, they really don't you've got quite a lot of control and power um whether you relinquish it or not is up to you uh the only thing they could take away from you is what you give them what you allow them to take anyways that's it for today. Um, maybe I might do a video tonight, but my kid is awake and I've got to go. Thank you for uh, for joining me on this one, and you know, just keep your eye out on on certain things. Patterns repeat themselves, although uh, not exactly. All right. All right. Thank you, and have a good day.